Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today we are going to be talking about my priority reads of 2022. in advance for how often I'm going to be spinning in this chair because uh, this floor is not even and it means that I just naturally spin away from the camera so I'm trying to keep myself in place but it doesn't really work too well. But I'm filming this on a lunch break and just decided to have a little cosy catch up over lunch, that kind of situation, and talk through 10 books that I would really love to read this year. Whenever I make these videos, I am really bad for just forgetting that I made them and forgetting which books I put on the list. However, this time round, I am actually going to be putting these books onto my book cart so that they are separate from the rest of the books on my shelves. They can't get hidden away or just kind of looked over. So I'm going to be doing that as we go through this video. You can't see it because it's too short, but it is here. <laughs> and that way these books will be sat next to my bed and I'll be able to very easily pick from them whenever I'm creating a TBR. So I've split this list into two subcategories, I guess. So we have a few books which are sequels that I really want to prioritise. And then I also have all the other books I want to read for one reason or another. So I am going to start with the sequels because the main reason why I want to read these is because I'm making it's a priority to actually continue with series that I have on the go. And these are the ones that are the most pressing after the ones that I'm already making my way through currently. So the first one would be Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. This is the second book in the Discovery of Witches series. I just read a Discovery of Witches back in December. So I want to make sure that I'm continuing this series while it's still very fresh in my head. The first book of Discovery of Witches follows a witch who finds an old manuscript in a library. And as soon as she touches this, everybody just swarms around her, witches, demons, vampires, because this was meant to be a lost manuscript. It's meant to be hidden away for centuries and she just happened to find it. And it's said to hold a lot of secrets about all of the different creatures and why they exist, how to get rid of them, stuff like that. So everybody wants to get hold of this. But of course, this could be very dangerous information. And along the way, she ends up having a forbidden romance with a vampire and I really enjoyed the first book. I found it quite fun. It took me a while to get through, but I did enjoy it enough to continue the series. So hopefully I'll be able to do that this year. A book that I really should have read by now, and I did start it, but at the time I had so much going on that I was like, I need to read this at a time where I can dedicate all of my time and energy to it because this one is Master Artificer by Justin Cole. If you saw my best books of 2021 you'll know that the first book Master of Sorrows was one of my favourite books of the year and it's a book that I will just continuously rave about because I just loved it so much. In the first book we're following a guy called Anev who is training to become part of this elite group of people who confiscate magical artifacts because in this world magic is seen as a bad thing, an evil thing. Anev is wanting to become part of this so we see him taking part in a competition to hopefully gain a place amongst them. However we also see Anev go through such a huge inner turmoil about this because he's being raised to not hate magic and not believe that it is this evil thing that the academy is training them to believe and so we see him go through all that plus so much more it's just such an epic book and I need to read this one but it is a hefty chonker this one is almost a thousand pages it's 900 just under 900 pages so it is one hell of a book but I can't wait for it I really can't although apparently I can because I have been <laughs> And then the final one from this list that continues the series is Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the Fairy Loot edition for anybody wondering. I really love the foiling on these so I don't have the dust jackets on which is why I only have this to show right now and I am going to put it down otherwise you'll just get reflections all the way through this but the first book from Blood and Ash, again, I read last year and really enjoyed it. I know that the most recent books that have come out have been getting a few more negative reviews, but I just want to continue the series and I want to be able to keep up with the series as they're being released because as soon as I fall behind, I feel like that's it for me. <laughs> and I already am a little bit behind, so hopefully I can catch up. But the first book from Blood and Ash follows a girl called Poppy who is a maiden, which means that she's basically locked away and kept in relative isolation until the day of her ascension in which she's kind of like offered to the gods However, she gains an Allura new guard who is quite mysterious and amongst many of the forbidden things that she gets up to, he might just be part of one of them. So there is a big fantasy element alongside the series as well. And I was really quite surprised by how prominent that was in the story since nobody ever mentions it. I'm never quite sure what counts as a spoiler or not because of that, but I really enjoyed it. I found the first book really addictive and I definitely do want to get around to reading 
the second one before I fall too far behind. So then we get onto the books that I have on this list for some other reason and I basically just shopped my shelves a little bit and pulled off all the books that I've been saying for a long time, oh I need to read that book or I need to read that for a certain reason. Most of them are fantasy but we do have a couple of anomalies in there. So to start with I have The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. This one is a non-fiction book about the victims of Jack the Ripper. This is on this list because I used to read non-fiction quite a lot, however I kind of fell out of the habit of doing that and ever since that time, which was a good few years ago now, I have been wanting to read this book. This has been the non-fiction book highest on my priority list since I bought it a good few years ago now. I've been to an event in which I heard Hallie Rubenhall talk about this book and why she was so invested in writing it, as well as some of the backlash that she received in writing this book and it was just something I was fascinated in. I love listening to true crime videos and every single time I think of non-fiction and the books that I want to read this is always the first one that pops up on my radar so I think it's about time I actually do read this one because it's been a long time coming. <laughs> Next up we have a classic. Now with classics I left university last year and just stopped reading classics basically. <laughs> it took me a long time to get back into them because I just wanted to separate myself so entirely from my uni experience experience for a while that I didn't even look at the classics that I owned. But this is one which I gained motivation to read again around October because it's a gothic classic and it's one that I always feel strange about having not read because I've read so many gothic classics and this is one of the like most iconic ones, the most well-known ones, that I just want to be able to read it and see why it's so loved. So hopefully this year I will be able to finally read Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is one of the original vampire stories and back in October I did actually read Carmilla which was the vampire story predating this one and is also said to be some of the inspiration behind Dracula. So now that I've read that I would love to be able to follow up with this one and give it a read. I love gothic classics. I don't read or consume vampire content all that often but I tend to really enjoy it when I do so hopefully that will be the case with this one. This edition is the Chilton Classic and it's just absolutely beautiful. This isn't going to be going in my book car because this lives on display on the bookshelves that I normally sit in front of but I do have another edition that I will put as a placeholder on at my book cart so I remember that I do actually want to read this. Not that I would forget but you know what I mean. <laughs> I then have another gothic book which I just feel like I've been saying for too long now oh I'm gonna read that every single time we get around to autumn or Halloween time. This is one of the books I say I want to read and I'm sick of hearing myself say that now so I need to actually just get on with it and do that because this one is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I look like I matched the book. <laughs> It's like the exact shade of green. <laughs> I own quite a few of Silvio Moreno Garcia's books but this is the one which definitely draws me in the most currently. This one is set in 1950s Mexico and we're following a woman called Naomi who visits a castle that her sister now lives in after being married to the person who owns it but she receives a very panicked letter from her sister who seems incredibly anxiety ridden insinuating that she's in danger and so Naomi goes to this castle to find out what's going on. Everything seems pretty normal when she gets there but the longer she stays there the weirder things become. I feel like I'm going to really love this one and I don't know if that's part of the reason why I've been putting off reading it because I just I don't know. I both want to read it right now but also want to hold on to it so I don't know but this year this will be the year. <laughs> Next up we have another one which I've been saying that I need to read for the longest time and that is Song of Sacrifice by Janelle Rhiannon. This one is a Greek myth retelling or a Trojan War retelling from the women's perspective. It's a very common theme within retellings but this one seems to retell the stories of lots of different women and there's some women in here which I haven't seen a retelling of before so I'm very excited about that but this is one which I see as quite a high priority Greek myth retelling on my TBR and I have seen it that way since I got it which again must have been a couple of years ago now. This is probably one of the larger Greek myth retellings that I have. It's near 500 pages. It's not too big but again this will have kind of suffered the consequences of me being at university because I studied Greek myth for a while and I also wrote my dissertation on Greek myth retellings so once I finished with that I kind of just wanted a break from them even though I do still absolutely love them but I am now finally ready to head back into Greek myth retellings and I definitely want to prioritise this one amongst the ones that I have. 
have, so fingers crossed I will finally get around to doing that. And then we have a few books which I've just been really interested in and my interest hasn't kind of dipped or waned at all as time has passed so I do want to hopefully prioritise these two. The first being The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This one I've mentioned far too many times and I'm still surprised that I haven't read it yet because again I feel like I'm going to absolutely love this one but again that might be part of the reason why I've been putting it off until now. In this one we are following Adi LaRue who makes a deal with the devil to live forever however she doesn't realise that in making this deal there is a catch, that catch being that she will be remembered by nobody. So of course this is an incredibly lonely existence and we're following Addie's life as she's going through 300 years of this existence as she's struggling to you know gain a home because nobody remembers that she wrote down her name for a house. She can't have any friends or relationships because they all forget about her the second she leaves their eyesight. I went to a virtual launch event for this book and the way that V.E. Schwab just talked about some of the content within this book made me think that I'm going to absolutely be obsessed so I hope that will be the case. I haven't loved the most recent books that I've read by V.E. Schwab so hopefully this will kind of reignite my love for her books so we'll see how it goes. I then also have The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is going to be the year that I read Libba Bray because I also have her other book A Great and Terrible Beauty on my Unhull project so that will also hopefully be read this year but this is the one that I'm most intrigued about because this one is set in New York City I believe in the 1920s but this one is kind of like a murder mystery but with some elements of clairvoyancy involved which just has me hooked. We're following Evie who goes to live with her eccentric uncle who has an unhealthy obsession with the occult and it's this obsession which gets him involved in a murder mystery because there seems to be something a little bit strange about this murder and this entire time Evie has been hiding the fact that she has some kind of magical ability, she's been hiding this from her uncle but this ability could very well help crack this murder case and so she gets gets wound up within this mystery and the story ensues. I am just so intrigued. It sounds like we have a whole bunch of characters who have some kind of ability and I just think that I'm going to be obsessed with this. Again it's a bit of a chonker so that could be part of the reason why I've been putting it off but this is the year. I'm confident in that much. <laughs> and then finally we have Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This one is on the list because I was so hyped for its release and then just didn't read it. <laughs> This one is based in a world where the winter solstice is a huge celebration. It's seen as a time for celebrating renewal and you know just things just starting again but it just so happens that this particular winter solstice coincides with a solar eclipse which is an even bigger event because that is seen as the sun god's unbalancing of the world so it's expected to be a big day. Meanwhile there is a ship sailing towards this land and on it is a captain whose song can calm waters and also warp a man's mind. She has a quote-unquote harmless guest on board but she doesn't quite trust that because anybody who is being called harmless seems to be the exact opposite. They are heading towards the land and I imagine that either before they reach the land or possibly when they do, chaos ensues in some way or another. It's a very mysterious synopsis but I just think that it sounds incredible. I am so intrigued by the mystery and also the magic in this apparently harmless stranger which could possibly be a villain. So I really want to give this a read this year along with all the rest too. So I did not choose small books for this list. This is a really heavy stack of books. <laughs> but these are the ones that I'm hoping to read this year. I am gonna put them down before they all collapse and I'm gonna put them within this book cart of mine. So hopefully we will actually see some progress on my reading of these. Throughout the course of this year, do let me know if you've read any of them, if you want me to prioritise any in particular, and of course do let me know if there are any books that you are hoping to prioritise this year too. If you made it this far into the video then leave me the clock emoji or any kind of timer emoji because we have a time limit on these books. Well we don't. It's an arbitrary time limit, but hopefully this year is the year. <laughs> but for now, I shall love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.